When studying structural geology, uh, strike and dip can be a really confusing concept for people. Once you get it, it's not so bad, but in the beginning it can be really tough. Um, so we're going to talk about it today. Um, strike is the direction a bed travels. You've probably heard that. And dip is the direction and the amount that that bed is angled. Okay, So let's just pretend like into the camera is north and behind me is south. So um, north, east, south, west. And so I'm going to use this as a sedimentary bed. So just a book, Weathering Heights, if you're interested. Um, and so this is this flat layer and it got deposited as sedimentary rock, got deposited as a flat bed. But at some point, maybe something got squished. And so it got tilted like this. Okay, so got squished up and here's part of the bed there. It probably was part of a fold, something like that, right? Um, so how do we describe this? Well, with strike, I always think about it like the direction you would walk along the bed if you didn't wanna go up or down on that bed. So if you think about, if I'm standing here and I walk this way, which is east, I'm going to be going down the incline of that bed. If I were to walk this way, I'm going off of the bed entirely. So I need to walk towards you or directly away from you. And assuming this bed went on forever, you could follow it forever and ever and ever, right? So that's the strike direction. So the direction that that bed travels where you wouldn't be going um, up or down on that bed surface. So you could even um, strike is here as well, right? If I was lower on the bed, I could walk towards you here and that's still the strike direction. So in this case, the strike direction is north-south. Now, when we talk about dip, we want to talk about two things, the direction it's dipping and then the amount. So in this case here, um, it's dipping off to the east. So if I were to place a drop of water on my surface here, my sedimentary bed, it would roll off toward the east. So that's an east dip. If it was tipped this way, it would be to the west. And then the last part is the dip amount. So um, this would be horizontal, zero degrees. This will be vertical, 90 degrees. So I'm gonna pick right in between, about 45 degrees. Hopefully that's about right. Um, and so I would now say it's striking north, south, dipping to the east, and at an angle of 45 degrees. So how do I represent that on the map? Let's look at that real quick. So ignore this for a second. I'm going to draw a little mini map up here. So let's say that this is my little mini map. I'm looking down and of course I need a north arrow to tell me which direction is north. Um, and in this case, we would do north, east, and this would be south. And then of course that way would be west. And so let's say that this bed came out right here. That's where the book was coming out of my little map here. So it was like at an angle, well, an angle like this. So the strike is going to be north-south. So we would draw a long line like that in the north-south orientation. And we said that our um, dipping was to the east. So I put a little, what's called a tick mark off to the east like that, like a really stubby T. And then it's 45 degrees. So I would write the number 45 there. And that's how I'm going to represent that. Uh, so we left out here. It's a north-south orientation. But if it was like a northeast orientation, you would just draw your strike line something like this. And if it was dipping to the northwest, you would draw your tick off like that. And if it was dipping three degrees, you'd write the number three there. All right, so that's how you would do that um, with our little book example. So let's take this block diagram. So I have a fold. Right? So this is folded. This is the front cross-sectional view. If you were to just look at this front part, you can see that fold. And then this block diagram is revealing what's, what's happening at the top and along the side. Um, and so let's take the bed in the middle here. I'm going to take this bed and we're going to talk about what it's doing for its strike and its dip. Okay. And so we can see that on the right side of this map, um, it is striking in this direction here. This is the direction I'd have to travel if I wanted to stay on that bed. Okay, And so same thing over here. It's striking in this direction here. Let's um, assume that this is north. So it's striking north-south. And if we look at the dip, we can see from our cross section that it's dipping toward the center of that fold. So I would draw a little tick mark there to the center 
and a little tick mark there to the center. And let's say that that's 45 degrees, so I would put a little 45 here and a 45 there, and that would be my strike and dip on the top of this block diagram. Now, um, oftentimes you'll have a map that you're working with. So here, if I take the top of this block diagram off and I pop it over here, that's what my map view is going to look like. So let's label this map. So we're super clear about that. Um, and then let's find our bed. So we have this bed in here that we now know is diving down underneath the center bed and popping back up, something like that. So how do we write these strike and dip symbols here? So again, assuming that this is north on our little map, we would draw a north-south strike in both locations, and we would know that it's dipping to the center. And then I would write my 45 and my 45. And so now when I look at this, I get this visual. I can say, oh, these are dipping to the center. They meet somewhere underneath, right, in this kind of fold. So what we see here in my head, I can kind of figure that out. If you just ran across this environment and you didn't have the strike and dip symbols, you wouldn't know. Maybe these are two separate beds and they're all dipping in one direction. Or maybe it's the same bed, but it actually comes over the top in a different type of fold we call an anticline. Um, so that's why the strike and dip symbols are really important. It helps us take a map view like this and really be able to visualize what's happening under the surface.